Now we're in the room and we're at the bed. And his name is Charles. Charles heads here, Sherry's over there, I'm here. And so we're looking at his balloon pump site and the plan was to pull the balloon pump at four o'clock and all of a sudden, the monitor in the patient's room went ding, 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 one of those red alarms. And so I turned around, the monitor's right over my head and I looked up. Now I did not see a 12 lead, obviously, but we monitor in lead V1. Now, his heart rate is fast. And I gotta tell you, I saw that. The first thing I did was put my eyes back on Charles to make sure Charles was still with me. He was awake, alert, and oriented. I go back to the monitor. Now look at lead V1. I'm negative in V1. Do you agree with me that I still have a skinny R wave and a slick downstroke? So I'm not worried about VT. So I said, Sherry, it looks irregularly irregular. It's hard to tell here. But I said, it looks like atrial fibrillation. So we did this ECG. Now, what did you learn about T waves today? You learned that once a T wave flips over, it's gonna stay flipped over, right? In most patients, weeks to months. And we don't want to prematurely see those T waves come back upright. My rule of thumb in practice is if you flip your T waves over, like he did, they're gonna stay flipped over until you're discharged or until I clock out. So, oh, so close, right? It's 3.30. So we do this ECG, look at this. T waves are back upright, lead two, lead three, AVF, V4, V5, V6. So we called the interventionalist. We said, hey, it looks like this guy's reoccluded his coronary artery. Looks like he's reinfarcting and he's gone into atrial fib as a result, but Charles was not having any symptoms. And so the interventionalist said, I don't think so. If that was a reoccluded vessel, he would be in pain. So he consulted electrophysiology because our, our primary point here is to get rate control. We have a patient with a low ejection fraction, took a big hit, we have a rapid ventricular response. So EP ordered DIG. So we gave IV DIG. Digoxin's usually contraindicated in acute MI. Uh, we let him know that. He still wanted DIG given. We gave DIG, but DIG didn't really have any great effect on him in terms of rate control. So what happened is the interventionalist came up to actually look at him and said, hey, he's not gonna tolerate this. We gotta get him out of this. And so what we should have done, do you not agree, is the patient should have been cardioverted, electrically. And we had an EP consult, but the interventionalist was a little impatient in waiting for him to get there and to collaborate with him. So he said, let's give ibutylite. Pure class three antiarrhythmic, correct? That's Corvert. So now the wife comes back. There's a code card outside the room. There's two cardiologists in the room. There's about four nurses in the room. So I intercept her. I get her into a little consult room and I say, I know this looks bad, but this is atrial fibrillation. This is not life-threatening. We're gonna get him out of this. Give me five minutes. We have a lot of equipment in there and I'll come back to get you. And as I was walking back into the room, I looked up at the monitor in the hallway from that consult room to his room. And this is what I see in lead V1. Now, it's negative in V1. So when it's negative, we're concerned about R waves and downstrokes. Do you see that I now have a fat little R wave in V1? Now I know this is VT. So I walk in the room and the two cardiologists were actually on the phone talking about other pages that they had gotten. And I said, hey, VT. So the electrophysiologist shocks the patient. He promptly goes into VFib. And for about two and a half hours, we resuscitate him. We can get him out but we can't keep him out. And I am actually doing this ECG in between CPR defibrillator while the defibrillator is charging. So now I have to go back out and I have to tell the wife, this doesn't look good. And you can imagine how upset she was. And I actually brought the wife and the daughter various times, four times during this resuscitation effort into the room at the head of the bed, talking to the patient. Well, Charles survived. And this is his ECG the next morning. Now, you notice that his T waves are back inverted. Now, does that mean he reoccluded and he re-evolved? Does that mean that it's from the atrial fibrillation alone? The reason I think that there was either a regional pericarditis, which evolved, or that this was a, an acute thrombus, and maybe he didn't have pain because he was a late presenter and he already had done so much damage, maybe he just didn't experience the pain sensation, but I still think that he had an occluded vessel because we did take him down to the cath lab later that hospital stay in order to do that LAD lesion and his right coronary was not open and we sent him successfully to surgery for bypass and he did well.